Hi, my name's Phil and I like talking about politics. So today, Jeremy Corbyn held his meeting with various parties opposed to Boris Johnson's No Deal Brexit. So in this video, I'd like to discuss the results of that, the lead up to it, what it means for Parliament and add in my own thoughts as well. But first, if you find yourself enjoying this video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So very brief background into the meeting. Boris Johnson wants to take the UK out of the EU without a deal on October the 31st. All this talk of a deal was just that and now he's starting to come clean about us having leaving via the cliff edge, while still of course blaming everyone else for it. The one surefire way to prevent Johnson doing this is to replace him as Prime Minister. The mechanisms for this are to trigger a vote of no confidence in Johnson's government. If he loses, then Parliament has 14 days to find another Prime Minister who would then form a government in order to extend Article 50 and then issue a people's vote, after which a general election would be triggered to deal with the outcome. But although this idea has wide support, the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn wanted him to be the nominated Prime Minister and to have a general election only after extending Article 50, not having a public vote yet. The reason for this was made clear in his article in The Independent on Monday, which I talked about yesterday, in that he wanted to arrange a different withdrawal agreement to recommend to the public as an alternative Brexit. But there were multiple problems with this plan. The first of which is that the other parties opposed to Johnson don't want more time wasted on the destruction of the country with this right-wing vanity project called Brexit. They want a public vote before a general election. Two, a general election is very unpredictable and almost anything may happen. Three, Jeremy Corbyn is not in favour of the EU. Given that the rest of the alliance are pro-European, they simply don't trust a Eurosceptic to be their leader at this crucial time. And four, he would need Conservative support. Now, Labour and the Conservatives are major political opponents, but Corbyn represents a part of the Labour support who are not merely opposed to the Tories, but actively call for their murder and torture. And although I'd like to think that most of them don't mean it literally, it is a nastiness that isn't likely to get Conservatives on board. In other words, Corbyn can't get the confidence of the House after defeating Johnson, and so another candidate would need to be found. So, on to the meeting itself. Unfortunately, although Corbyn has said he would do anything to stop No Deal and nothing was off the table, a much clearer recent statement of his said that he would not support a candidate for Prime Minister other than himself. This resulted in the Tory rebels staying away from the meeting. That essentially knackered any chance of agreeing to replace Johnson next week. However, the other parties were keen to ensure that Corbyn would not trigger a confidence vote he has agreed to do this. This is extremely important because a candidate is needed to replace Johnson before a confidence vote, otherwise it would be a disaster whatever the outcome. If Johnson wins, then he receives a huge morale boost for himself and his supporters and looks like a secure leader to the country and wider world. If he loses, but nobody replaces him, then there's a general election that Johnson will choose the timing of. This would mean that he'd select a date that means Parliament being dissolved in the run-up to the current Article 50 deadline of October the 31st and a no-deal Brexit being almost certain. It is absolutely vital that Corbyn does not trigger such a vote without a plan, an agreed plan to follow up on. But as I said, he has indeed agreed to do this. But what if Boris Johnson decides to try and trigger a general election himself? He hasn't the power to call one, but he could put it to a vote in Parliament. If two thirds of MPs agree, then we still end up with a general election and the same basic outcome. Corbyn would really want to get his MPs to vote in favour of it, though I suppose if it means a no deal Brexit, he might have to oppose it for now. The other question is if Johnson would want this. As things currently stand, if he fights a general election whilst we're still in the EU, the Brexit party takes votes away from him. Nigel Farage has hinted that he would not put up candidates if we leave without a deal, though I'm not sure if he's entirely trustworthy. But Johnson may believe it or he may not. Either way, and I know these are mad times where political predictions are extremely tricky, but I can't think that Johnson would want to do this right now. He's more likely to accept Parliament blocking no deal just so long as he can say he did everything to go through with it. Still, 
Incompetence can be as bad as collusion, and even if Johnson appears blameless for yet another extension, his supporters may still abandon him if he hasn't delivered. But anyway, whether Johnson decides to try and prorogue Parliament or call a general election or do something entirely different is something we'll just have to wait and see for. What really matters is what the opponents of this no-deal Brexit intend. The first result of the meeting I saw was a tweet from Anna Subri, leader of the independent group, or Tiggers as some call it. Not something I'm in particularly in favour of because, you know, the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. Not really a description I use to ascribe to them. And also I see no evidence that they are either bouncy or fun. But her tweet said that they had agreed to legislative means of opposing no deal. Of course, if they can't replace Johnson, then that's all that's left to them. The problem for me is that I have not heard anyone explain how they can force Johnson to obtain an extension using legislation. After all, it's already illegal in British law for, for Johnson to take us out of the EU without Parliament's approval. Section 9 and 10 of the European Union Withdrawal Act make that clear. Deny it all you like, Brexiteers, but it's there in black and white. However, that doesn't help for two reasons. One, Johnson has already broken the law in his Brexit journey and so clearly doesn't care about doing so again. And two, it's not just up to Parliament if we get an extension or not. So British legislation cannot guarantee an extension that's also agreed by 27 other European countries. Another utterly po pointless bone of contention for me is who pushes the legislation. Jeremy Corbyn says he wants to, which makes sense to me. Others think it should come from backbenchers. Now, I guess the reason for backbenchers doing it is to help bypass party politics, but the only reason backbenchers have been doing so so far this year is because the main party leaders have not been helpful. If Corbyn now says he wants to help, then surely it's easier for him to push motions than backbenchers. Are we seriously saying that some Tory levels wouldn't vote for it because the Labour leader promoted it? That sounds bloody childish to me. At a time when we're in the most serious situation where one wrong move and we're gone from the EU without trade, movement, security and settlement rights with our continental neighbours as well as most other partners around the world. There are more meetings scheduled this week. Whatever it is they're going to do does need to be agreed before Parliament returns next week. Remember, Johnson is threatening to disband Parliament in the second week back. Yes, it may be illegal and it will go to court, but that would not stop him doing it until a Supreme Court judgment is finally made and that's some time off and would waste possibly a couple of weeks. So that's where we are with the still uncoordinated opposition to Johnson. A right old mess. But we'll have to see what happens next week, I suppose. I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.